Before we start the official uh, speech, I said to Dr. Sanati, today, many students in different faculties, like engineering faculties or management, they can use this kind of hybrid topic to combine energy, engineering or management together. And then he said, yes, there are some disciplines like finance or the other topic. Now I would like to ask him also a little bit display, explain about these uh, points for us. Yeah, okay, thank you, Dr. Bismarmadian. Uh, as you know, uh, when you want to consider subject in, as, as a total view, you should see uh, in which part you need some proficiency to um, adapt and uh, customize the subject and the methods that they use in order to cover the uh, requirements of the energy management using IoT. So um, I, I guess one of the big topics for, for the managers that um, will uh, encourage them to, to use the Internet of Energy is some economical and financial subject. So I guess it, it's a beginning because whenever somebody wants to, uh, or, or a manager wants to decide to go towards Internet of Energy and use it, uh, it's necessary to give them regardless of the government agencies or uh, private companies and um, maybe uh, private uh, public sectors that want to use from this concept, it's, it's a financial subject. So I, I guess uh, we have similar uh, disciplines that should be considered. For example, uh, the experts that are working on environmental subjects and uh, uh, health and, uh, for example, safety, it, it's also can, can be affected by, by the Internet of Energy. So it's important to uh, consider and, and define the blocks that can be um, building blocks of this subject and they, they, they totally make the um, Internet of Energy um, as, as a whole approach and uh, considering all the parameters that can affect the decisions and the behaviors of the uh, consumers and producers and also the other sectors that are working in related subjects. So I, I, I think if we define or try to define a framework that ca ca contains all the uh, aspects of the subject, it can encourage and it can define what kind of partners we need and how we can support different uh, sectors to define, for example, research, pro research projects or um, some type of operations, uh, modification in the operation in order to um, in, uh, integrate all of this together to reach to a common view and common approach uh, in all sectors toward Internet of Energy. I guess it can be useful. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Sanati, for your description. Yeah, I do agree with you. Also, according to Erasmus+, Plus, they are going to focus on developing project. That's why when we discuss about these topics, we need to uh, focus on developing research projects, not only fundamental research, because we want to have the application of this research in uh, in labor market, also in, in, in the industrial uh, sector, because uh, in most of the countries, one of the problems they have, or maybe it's better to say challenge, is uh, the theoretical part of the university or institution is not in the same level of the practical level in the industrial sector or business sector. That's why this, this kind of topic, this kind of project can help us and also the university students and university professors or company managers to have approach to combine different topics like Industry 4, Society 5, Internet of Things and uh, its applications and also uh, the very important topic, human resource. And this can give us an um, approach to look at all topics strategically and try to find solution for different kind of challenges. Uh, for example, in Germany, when I go to university to hold lecture all the time, I say to the students, listen, there are some points you always need to think. Innovation, small medium-sized enterprises, internet of thing, digitalization, sustainability, as you explained about, for example, environment or the other aspect of sustainability. And if you want to get success in this market because of the very strong competition, you must have knowledge, know-how and do-how in this field, and then you can um, 
show your abilities and uh, strong power inside the business. Now is uh, almost Uh, hello, Manfred. Hello. Hello. Hmm? Uh, hello, Manfred. I lost my access. Yes, I lost your video too. <laughs> I can see your video. Oh. I think you have to reconnect to the e-learning room. Shall I reconnect again? Hmm? But I can hear you. Hello, Manfred. Hello. No, I Hello. can hear can you, you too. Yeah. Can you please change my access, please? <laughs> yes. Thank you. Sorry, Dr. Sanati, because of interruption. That was technical problem. Yeah, I see. But I don't have your video. Uh, you don't. Well, you don't. One second. Okay, thank you. I think you have my video now. Yes. Okay, uh, and thank you for the first description. If you do agree, now is almost uh, 2.40 and we can start. Yes, okay. Okay, yeah. uh, okay. Good. Good afternoon, everybody. Now we are going to start our second webinar for the Erasmus Plus project, Internet of Energy Education Qualification. Today is November sixth. Our topic is the role of energy management and IOE in Industry 4.0 and its effect on human resource competencies. Our first speaker is Dr. Farshid Rayat Sanati, and the second one is uh, me, Hamid Dus uh, First of all, I would like to explain for you how is the plan. Uh, at first, in two, three minutes, I try to introduce the speakers, and also uh, after that, I explain the contents of our speech, and then I will, would like to ask Dr. Sanati after that to explain his company, Neil Guru, and his activities and expertise. And then I'm going to start to talk about energy management and IOE. And then uh, at all, we finish these things in 20 minutes. At, after that, Dr. Sanati is going to talk about Industry 4 and human resource competencies in 25 to 30 minutes. At, at, at the end, in 10 minutes, we are going to discuss about the question and answers. If you do agree, we can start. Okay, uh, first of all, I'm going to introduce Dr. Sanati. He is at the moment CEO at Nilgro GmbH in Germany in Dusseldorf, and he will explain his company in next slides. He has a PhD in Industrial Engineering, Advanced Production Systems. He has experience in different topics in a combination of management and in industrial engineering, like project management, business analyst, software architect, an information security expert, also expertise architecture and business process modeling. He has more than 20 years experience in project management for petrochemical, automotive, and maintenance management system. He had more than 400 seminars in several companies. Also, he had more than 20 years experience for holding lecture at different universities in different levels. Uh, 
second person is me, Hamid Dus Mohammadian. I'm a senior consultant at Industrial Management Institute, IMI, and also I'm a professor for Blue Green Sustainability and Cultural Dimension. More than 20, 200 seminars I had and speeches, workshops in several companies, events, and panels. Uh, more than 20 years, I had management consulting experience in the field of industrial management internationally. Also, uh, I had experience in international project management, in sustainable mobility, energy management, and global SMEs. At the moment, um, I am a professor in Germany, and I have more than uh, 10 years experience as a professor at different university and also internationally. Besides this, I had several books and number of publications in different journals and uh, conferences in the combination of management, engineering, energy, and sustainability. Our content should be about um, introduction of the company Nilguru, energy management and IOE, internet of energy, production to consumption chain, industry 4.0, a combination of advanced technologies, six dimensions of industry 4.0, Industry 4.0, readiness check, synchronized development, business architecture, human resource development, the five rights, human resource assessment, human resource planning, strategic workforce planning, and at the end, digital transformation requires a cultural change. At the end, we are going to conclude our speech, and we have a question and discussion. Okay, I would like to ask Dr. Sanati to start to explain about his company, Nilgro. Okay, hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the webinar. Okay, if you are ready, we can start with, a, with an introduction video about the uh, Nilgo company and then I will explain a little bit about the services that the company has and, and the projects that we have done in different countries. Let's please start now, so this is possible. Thank you everybody for watching the video. Um, I welcome you again uh, to this webinar and uh, uh, for a start I want to talk a little bit about the services of the uh, Nilgo company. It's a, a part of the uh, Nilgo group as a holding and uh, this is an engineering supply and commissioning company which, uh, which is uh, stated in Germany in Düsseldorf and uh, we have several projects in uh, different uh, companies in uh, Iran, in Kazakhstan, in Turkey, Italy, and Germany, in steel industry, petrochemical companies, um, and also uh, in 
oil and gas. That was the, the main part of our profession. We had some projects for um, preparing the infrastructure for using Industry 4.0 and uh, going toward the smart factory. So um, our company tried to prepare some um, basic infrastructures that are necessary. For example, you need to arrange your basic data uh, in order to um, prepare the data that is necessary in order to uh, provide the um, prerequisites of Industry 4.0. And uh, due to these requirements, we started to have some technical consulting for, for the companies. Um, in some companies, it's also a huge project. For example, we have a project in a steel industry in Iran that have more than 200,000 um, equipment in this process. And you can suppose that how much data is necessary and how much technical uh, considerations should be considered in order to um, provide the prerequisites of Industry 4.0. I don't want to go to, to the detail of the technical subject, but uh, uh, everybody uh, knows that when you want to go to the, to, toward the new technology and uh, provide the um, conditions of uh, new approaches, it's very difficult to uh, consider all, all the uh, limitations and the, the complexity that exists in the current condition of the um, manufacturing process and operations. For example, suppose that you want to move toward uh, machine learning and understanding the or using the um, new method in, in, uh, in your uh, decision making and uh, providing more uh, valuable data for, for your manager. At first, you need to know what kind of technology do you have and uh, what are the limitations of current situation. When you go, especially in international uh, level and you want to work in different countries, you see that cultures and uh, uh, different level of infrastructure that is in public sector and also an image of that in, in the factories, you can see that it, uh, it should be considered that every country has its own uh, limitation. So in technical consulting, we, we will consider all the limitations, especially physically and technically, and uh, we will help companies to uh, bring all of this in, in a situation that can be used for for um, advanced technologies such as Industry 4.0. And also we do some kind of assessment and inspection in technical uh, sectors. Uh, and it, it's uh, one of the main branch of our services. And uh, yeah, at the same time, sometimes uh, that companies need uh, some uh, type of design and development for, for from technical point of view and also um, uh, for for supplying the uh, equipment and devices that are necessary we do the supply and logistics and especially with uh, the, the core uh, business of our company is industry 4.0 consulting and using of IOT in in uh, developing the operations and also the manufacturing and some in some uh, situations in public sector that we had some experiences in Turkey and uh, also in Italy. So uh, we use the asset management uh, concept and uh, we advise uh, because the main consumers of, of the energy are uh, assets that are uh, in different uh, that, that are used in different different sectors it's very important to consider the concept of asset management, which is a main part of the uh, infrastructure that are necessary in Industry 4.0. And also, uh, since we are talking about Internet of Energy, they are the main consumers of energy in 
at the end of the chain of energy management that we will see in the next part. And also, we help companies to optimize the product and uh, their distribution in, in, the, in a chain. So we are a, an engineering company that uh, we can help different sectors to um, consider the um, special, special conditions of their business and their operations in order to utilize the benefits of uh, Internet of uh, Energy and Industry 4.0 benefits. So we will go to the, uh, to the main sections of the subject and especially talking about the um, human resource aspect of the subject because uh, it can affect everything if you have all um, elements of the Industry 4.0 but you didn't have but you don't have the, uh, the qualified personnel to use from the technology, it's very difficult to have it in, on, on your uh, application. So uh, I asked from Dr. Dusma Madian to start uh, with, a, with a brief of the Internet of Energy and the, talking about the fundamentals of the subject, and uh, I will come back and explain a little bit about the uh, main subject of our webinar. Thank you, Dr. Okay, thank you, Dr. Sanati, for introducing the company Nilguru and services. Now I'm going to start to talk about energy management and relation between IOE and energy management, and then uh, the, again we have Dr. Sanati to continue to talk, talk about Industry 4 and its uh, effect and role on HR competencies. As you know, after 1970s, during the Cold War between Soviet Union and USA, Elvin Toffler published a book called The Third Wave, and he tried to talk about three different waves or ages, agriculture, industrial, and post-industrial age. In his book, he tried to explain after 1917, we are in the industrial uh, post-industrial age or wave, and everything is going to be changed because now we have information technology. And according to his book and also the other researchers, we can say before 1970, all businesses, industries could affect on developing information technology. But after 1917, information technology could affect to develop the other business and industries especially energy. Now we are going to talk about energy because energy, fossil energy or renewable energy still is very important points in the world for everybody. Now we have smarter networks are needed to meet the challenge of balancing the security of energy supplies with the commitment to lower carbon emissions. As we started to talk and discuss with Dr. Sanati about the environmental approach of energy. Of course, environment is very important uh, according to the sustainability approach, also according to quality of life and livability. Today, we can say the energy economy has moved from a power economy to, date, to a data and power economy, and that shows the relation between IoT and energy sector, and we call in our project this IOE. We have two categories for the challenges, energy challenges and energy management challenges. When we talk about energy challenges, we can say, for example, increasing the energy consumption, waste energy, human society and culture of how to use energy, and that's a part of our topic today, HR, because culture is a very important aspect of look at energy and how to use energy and how to manage energy. Completion of fossil fuels and tendency to re renewable energy, environmental changes, tendency to network information system, rising the energy costs. And also the last one, technologies development. Now we are going to talk about energy management challenges. We have three different groups. Energy managerial challenges, the timely and variable access and to and use of energy information, the integrity of communicated information, Confident, confidentiality of personal privacy and property information. The second one, 
second one is energy technical challenges and the last one business model challenges now i'm going to talk about the ioe and energy management relation together ensure an eff efficient efficient Building data management system reduce energy consumption by identifying sustain, sustainable IOE or Internet of Energy, improve uptime and reliability of industrial utilities, regulatory uh, compliance of production environment, develop awareness of water, air, gas, electric, and steam usage, or we say uh, wages, move towards sustainable development and environmental protection, an IOE solution for new policy, waste as energy. Train people to use energy more efficiently with IOE solutions. These two last parts also is about human resource because when we talk about training and cultural aspects of IOE for the human, it's very important to train them how to manage and use energy. IOE challenges. Here we have three different challenges for IOE, lack of knowledge, security, cost, and the last one, interest of actors. For know-how and do-how, because it's not only about the fundamental research, also it is about the practical research. How to solve them with HRD plan or human resource development plan. Vocational training is a very good idea, but in next slide, Dr. Sanati is going to talk about the human resource planning, applied sciences, energy saving, train people, to use energy more efficiently with IOE solution and etc. Uh, role of education and training. Education and training is always important for us, but when we say education and training, because we want to say we have three level of education and training, vocational training, applied sciences, and academic training. It can solve the lack of know-how and do-how for us. As I said, training vocationally, applied sciences, and academic education. That's also something like cultural synergy because this is very important to make an infrastructure for the culture, for the human resources to understand how to use and how to manage energy with IoT uh, technologies. And who is the actors for this uh, the energy management sectors? We are talking about universities or institutions, energy companies and IT companies and etc. That's why in our webinars we are going to invite people from universities or from energy companies or IoT companies or combination of energy and IoT to come and discuss about their experience in this field practically. Now I would like to ask Dr. Sanati to continue the topic in terms of energy and industry four and also its effect on human resource competency. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Hamid. Uh, I, I want to come back to the subject and uh, use from the descriptions of Dr. Dusman Madian. As you know, um, when we want to go toward training, an effective training requires uh, some kind of designs before. Because uh, when you talk about the concept, it's okay. You can use from uh, academic training or may maybe some type of fundamentals that you can explain for the employees or the managers and it, they say okay it's good and maybe they, it will um, bring some kind of benefits for us but when we want to uh, do some kind of reasoning for them that why they should go toward this subject and uh, how they should move and what steps they need and what kind of training they need what kind of uh, human resource and what kind of uh, proficiency they, they need in order to go toward developing this technology and uh, apply this technology in their uh, daily operation or uh, in their infrastructure, uh, you need some, uh, you need a roadmap and a methodology in order to um, bring all of this together and integrate it. So uh, I want to talk about the, uh, at the beginning, about the chain of the energy and uh, how we should manage this, this chain. Uh, uh, as, as you see in this uh, uh, in this uh, picture that uh, I show here, uh, you see that it, it shows uh, the chain of the energy production, energy uh, transfer, and the transmission, and also the consumers. 
this, this is how, somehow the um, the chain of the energy from production to consumption. Uh, you can consider how many devices exist uh, in this uh, in this all from uh, production or power generation plants to to the uh, distribution and transmission of this uh, power to the consumption point and also on the consumers it, it would be it, it can be a kind of uh, building or uh, some type of manufacturing process and uh, wherever that can uh, use some kind of equipment that uses the energy. So uh, we want to see how we can manage all of this uh, chain from macro level and also how we can go in deep to the micro, micro level to see what are the equipment and how we can um, control and uh, optimize the usage of energy in every plant that we have and every point that we consume the energy. So, uh, we, Mr. Dr. Dusman Madian talked about the actors and the, the people or uh, managers or businesses that are um, engaged in this chain. But I want to show uh, a little bit and I, and I want to introduce the methodology to develop this uh, um, concept and bring it to, to the condition that we can use it in, in our daily life and also in our daily operation in every business that we are. So uh, we should consider that uh, in the next slide that in the Internet of Energy we can have the oil and gas as the main uh, uh, fossil uh, the uh, elements that we use in order to generate and produce the energy directly or indirectly and also the grids that are used in this part and also uh, these are the uh, production and transmission part of the energy chain and also uh, centralized energy generation that is an approach in order to optimize the um, the, the Power, power generation points, uh, a kind of network that can be used and moved from generation to the transmission and also renewable, the renewable sources that can provide us with uh, more healthy uh, generation plants and uh, uh, lower the damage for the environment. It's also an approach and how we should use it, we should talk about it and uh, think about it, what's the methodology, and also retailers and distribution networks that can have some waste and uh, or uh, it, it should um, uh, connect from the uh, generation to the consumption and at the end uh, the, the sixth part of the elements is the uh, residential uh, or commercial and industrial consumers of the energy. So uh, if we want to have a very, very effective approach and methodology, we should consider that we are um, encountering with different solutions and different conditions in each of these six parts. But at the end, at the bottom line of all of these approaches are devices that, that consume the energy. And uh, using IoT and IOE, we can uh, capture more data from these devices in order to control them. Uh, Dr. Dusma Ahmadian in its past, uh, in the some slides before, talked about two two parameters that was uh, exactly and directly related to human resource uh, competences. But I want to tell him that uh, explain about uh, the um, er earlier uh, item that was about uh, reliability. When we are talking about reliability, we need we need uh, some type of data that should be captured from the devices, and also we need some people to analyze this data to control that that the device is not going out of its standard condition and con con consuming more energy than the standard that is designed for. So uh, it's very important to see at the at the end of all of this analysis uh, methods and analysis points, we need some kind of uh, competency in the human resource and some type of infrastructures and technologies that provide the 
uh, required data for that human. It also should be it, it also should be developed by by some experts that they are also in the chain of human resource that we need in order to uh, innovate, in order to develop, in order to implement, and in order to apply the the, uh, the Internet of Energy technology. So um, I, I want at, at, in the next slide I want to talk about this roadmap and uh, I want to show how we can understand what type of competences we need in order to uh, prepare people to use Internet of Energy. Um, I read two months ago a report from Roland Berger company that mentioned that in the, in the uh, 2020 we will have more than uh, 50 billion devices that would be connected through Internet. and uh, they, they uh, mentioned in the report that uh, the main limitation when we want to go toward Internet of Things and Industry 4.0 is the competencies and beliefs that we need in, in our people in order to apply this technology uh, in their company. And uh, otherwise, we have uh, enough sensors, enough the capturing devices, and all the technology elements that we need are ready in order to use Internet of Things and in this Internet of Energy. It's just we need to provide the people from cultural point of view to apply this in, in the, the, to the uh, daily operations. So I want to continue about Industry 4.0 to see how uh, or, or what are the main uh, elements of this technology and uh, what are the uh, line of proficiency that we need uh, in order to go toward Industry 4.0. Uh, I, I mentioned to the um, four uh, main um, subsections of Industry 4.0 or embedded technologies in Industry 4.0. Uh, the first one is cyber physical systems. It's a kind of physical systems that uh, are using um, logical and uh, machine learning in their um, operation and they can control themselves. It means that we, we, we can have devices that are working in their standard conditions all the time. And as soon as they do have, they show some abnormal uh, uh, behavior, we can understand and we can modify it in order to uh, prevent the uh, waste that may occur during the operation. So cyber physical systems, that will eliminate uh, uh, human resource from, from the operation control is the main part. The second one is IoT, that we can see how effective it is and what are the benefits. Uh, so uh, the, the third one is cloud computing. It's an infrastructure that they need in order to balance the, the data capturing and data um, uh, transportation uh, in order to um, use or share the resources that are in, in, the, in the network situation and also cognitive computing that is uh, using of modern and advanced uh, meta-heuristic uh, mathematics in order to uh, do some uh, forecasting and estimation about the conditions of data and finding the patterns of uh, abnormal operations uh, and finding it and using people to control the um, condition uh, totally. So uh, these four uh, line of profession shows that it's not so simple for, uh, for the people to come into detail with uh, so much professional and how we can use it in, in, in uh, daily operations. If, if you want to go toward practical uh, researches as uh, Dr. Dusma Ahmadian mentioned, it's very important to simplify the, the technology in order to use it in, in, in uh, technical or industrial conditions or even more, more simple in, in, uh, in uh, public sector because uh, people cannot learn so much and they are not interested to go to new technologies so much. So uh, we should show benefits and we should uh, inform them about the benefits and also, 
provide experts with some kind of tools that can help them to apply this technology. Uh, fortunately, most of the famous companies such as uh, manufacturers and uh, technology providers such as Siemens, ABB and uh, other uh, famous, famous uh, companies provided some kind of uh, solutions and tools that can simplify using these this, uh, tools in, in their daily operation. And also uh, the main the, the infrastructures for cloud computing and for using cognitive computing and machine learning is provided through, uh, with uh, by uh, Microsoft and other solutioners that, that are famous and uh, provided some uh, user friendly tools in order to be applied by the people. But we should uh, go to more detail to help companies see. Uh, what are what they exactly need and how they should uh, uh, develop the competency of the people to reach to this point. So we need to know the exact combi combination of uh, and dimensions that they, they should work on uh, to get ready to use this technology. If you have a look at the, at uh, the, this uh, picture, you can see that strategy and business model is, is a main part of this subject and you need to put the, the advantage and the benefits of, of new technology in the strategy and business model of companies or public sector. If you show them that how they can use this technology as a strategy and the provide them a, a very clear uh, business model, they can know uh, how they want to go. So we will talk about this subject that how we can use from strategy and business model and how effective can be uh, to, to know what exactly should be teach to the people and how we can develop the competency of our people. So uh, strategy and business model is a subject and uh, also, technology is another part. Uh, they, they are well known, for example, big data, cloud, cybersecurity, and other technologies that are that have their own uh, experts. They are they are um, uh, developing, and, and they 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 are uh, introducing their abilities in in the uh, practical solutions and. Um, your, in your daily life, you see the benefits uh, in, in the mobiles that you use and the applications that you, you use daily. And uh, people are encouraging to use from these technologies, but we need another part. The finance and risk management is another part because uh, the main subject of the businesses uh, is the uh, benefits and uh, they are trying to do the projects at, that are economically uh, approved and show the benefits to the company. So uh, considering the risks that uh, exist in, in using new technologies and uh, how, how much money they need and how it can affect their benefits and uh, uh, this is the subject that should be considered in, in, in this methodology. Um, I will clarify this, this the subject in the next slide, I'm going to introduce just, just the elements in order to show what are the parts. Uh, and also, services and networks are another part that uh, we need to provide uh, and consider this part because these this are some, somehow the uh, infrastructures that we need to use this technology and also system and process. And at the end, we should consider the employees and competencies that, as I mentioned in the Roland Berger uh, the research, they showed that the main limitation to going and using Internet of Things is, uh, or Industry 4.0 is employees and competencies that is uh, a preventing uh, element that uh, businesses and uh, companies try to hold on and don't move into this new technology. So, uh, in order to see how much 
a company or a business unit is ready to go um, toward this technology, we have a readiness check that these elements that we mentioned before should be considered and to see uh, in, in which level a company is. Uh, it, it's obvious that we cannot uh, jump from level one to level four to level four, for example, we need to go step by step to see it's, it's based on the condition of the companies. For example, we work with, with the, the oil distribution company that most of the people are at the level one or two and you cannot uh, use from modern technologies in, in the operation. But in the more engineering companies, we, can, we see that their people are very, very good experienced and uh, we can go from level three to level four very fast. So uh, the, the time that we need to go from level one to level, level five and in, in the, the, the situation, the current situation of the business that we are entering to depends on the level that they are and how uh, ready their, their people are in order to go to the, the higher level of uh, readiness for, for, this, for using this technology. So, uh, uh, Summarizing of the explanation is that we, we need to uh, adapt our people cycle with the business cycle that we have. When we want to move to the new technology, we need to prepare your, our people in order to uh, cover the competences that we need to apply, to develop and apply a technology in the, uh, in the company. So uh, for this reason, uh, we developed in an art architecture in our company that uh, is used for, for our projects. Uh, it's somehow a know-how for our company, but uh, I prefer to share it with you to see what is your opinion about the subject. At, at the top, we have the, we call that a business architecture that is necessary to, to integrate different parts. Uh, as you see, we have some uh, colors that use to, to show strategic management, enterprise architecture, and human resource management parts of this uh, architecture. And as you see, it starts with business planning to show what exactly we want from our business. And after that, we will define the corporate level strategic management uh, part. It, 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 it means that when you want to use from a concept, for example, industry of things or industry, uh, internet of energy, and uh, also uh, industry 4.0, it should be engaged in your strategy. At the beginning, you need to use it and it should show you some benefits to reach to your um, objective. If you don't see any benefits or any value from this technology in reaching to your uh, objective, it means that uh, it's not necessary to use it at the lower level. So uh, since we see that this, this technology can uh, give us m m lower waste or m lower energy consumption and also some benefits uh, be beca because of the big data that we have and better decisions that we can make. So uh, it can be a strategic uh, approach. And when you define this, uh, this strategy in, in your strategic plan, you need to develop your business process so how do you want to implement this strategy? You, you formulate your strategy uh, to use this uh, technology, but how do you want to implement it? it your, your people cannot understand the process. They know their daily job and the functions that they have and the functions that they should do. So when you talk about using of uh, Internet of Energy in your strategy, you, you should define exactly what you want uh, to use. For example, you want to control your assets or con control the condition of your assets in order to control the consumption and reduce your cost. Or for example, you want to uh, balance the production of energy and consumption at the end in order to don't produce more energy to be necessary to be stored in some place and pay costs in order to store the energy. When, when you have this, this definition, you need some process that shows how do you want to implement this strategy, define the activities and the steps that you have in order to uh, control your 
um, your uh, process. So when you define the business process, based on that you can define business rules that some type of policies and the rules, uh, logics that you need to connect the activities that will end to the um, some infrastructures and applications that you need in order to control uh, and uh, facilitate the activities. From the other side, you will design your job based, based on the business process. So when you define your uh, business process and the defined activities, you can assign the activity and tasks to the job. And based on that, you need what exactly a job want to do, want to do. When you know when, when you know what what exactly a job wants to do or intends to do, you can define the competencies that are necessary for that job. It means the skills, the knowledge, the um, abilities that you need in order to do your job in the best way. So uh, based on this competencies that shows your um, future picture, you, you can plan your workforce and based on that you will do human resource assessment and provide your development plan for your people. So what, what you do, what, what kind of planning that you do here is exactly extracted from your job design and from your business process and from your strategy. It means you are implementing the technology in your company. And also the compensation and talent management is another part that will uh, cover the daily operation of your people that should be managed in order to reach to the best, uh, to the uh, final uh, goal that you defined for your people. So uh, if you want to develop the the competency of people, we should consider that we uh, need uh, people in right shape, in right sight, with right skills, and right spend and right size. When you use from a technology, then you define how exactly a task in a business process wants to be uh, implemented. You can exactly define how many work you have to do and based on that, you can define the size of the people and workforce that you need, and also the competencies that are necessary in order to do the job. So uh, these five rights are, are the main purpose of uh, providing your human resource development plan. And uh, at the next step, you will consider uh, some situations that should be considered in your company because these are a part of human resource management. You should consider the physical ability that is necessary when you know exactly what is content of the job. You can define the physical ability that are necessary to do the functions. And also you can define the other abilities, for example, team working, creativity or um, problem solving and other abilities that you, need, you require in order to do your functions in the best way and also skill and knowledge are the other part. At the same time, you should adapt your uh, personal, personnel with their job because the values should be uh, adapted and the, the value of the job and the value that personnel consider for themselves, they should be checked together because when somebody works in a job that is not uh, compatible with uh, his uh, um, satisfied conditions, it, it cannot produce the, the highest uh, productivity that you, you want. And also the qualifications that uh, is shown here and also work condition also can have some effects of, on the performance of the people. And also performance management is uh, another part because when people see that their performance will, would be uh, evaluated and uh, considered in the uh, career path, they, they, they will uh, adapt themselves with the requirements of the job. So uh, the, the thing that we, should, we want to consider is that the human resource planning is uh, somehow defining our demand, the, the, the architecture that we have for our business for the future, and also the things that uh, currently we have, the people that we have currently in our organization, and when we, when we want to adapt people 
to the conditions of the to the conditions of the uh, every job that we have we need to cover the gaps between these two so it, it means that we can define the uh, personal development plan uh, to see how we can prepare our people to to um, do this job in the future um, in, in the best quality that we need so we can uh, see what kind of people can cover the, the things that we need in the future and what positions are uh, empty and we should uh, go toward uh, training or some, some kind of uh, attracting people to come and go to this situation to cover the competencies that we need for this job. So uh, finally, we should uh, consider that uh, in workforce planning, in strategic workforce planning, uh, we should consider that uh, in long term, we can uh, define a strategic workforce planning that the variation of parameters can be considered and we should define the job family. For example, in the human resource family of jobs, what kind of competencies we need. Not, not going individually on, on every job, just defining the job family, for example, HR, financial or finance and maybe in uh, maintenance job family or engineering job family, uh, what kind of competencies we need with, with ev for every job family and we can based on these job families uh, adapt our strategic workforce plan to cover the objectives that we have for the future to apply the uh, new technology. And also when, when we come to the short term, uh, lower than one year, we can uh, individually consider every job and every uh, person that is uh, holding that job in our company, uh, we can uh, manpower, pre prepare our manpower planning and uh, try to adapt the people with the requirements of the job, every job. It's a little bit difficult and also movement is a little bit slow, slower than the strategic workforce planning that completely we can change the shape of the uh, technology and usage of um, that in, in, in the business. And also in the middle time we can cover the requirements with the talent management, uh, finding some, some fast growing people and uh, maybe attracting them, them from academic or institutions. Uh, the the top-ranked students uh, can fastly adapt themselves with the requirements of the job and we can uh, attract them to their company and uh, through, through a, a, a valid talent management program to provide the, the required um, competencies and training uh, and uh, preparing our people to cover in the middle time uh, the requirements of the job of organization. So uh, finally, we should call, uh, consider that all of this uh, planning needs uh, a, a kind of cultural change and people, in order to be prepared to cover all of these requirements, need time to adapt themselves with the new technology. As you see, maybe 10 years ago, uh, most of the people um, uh, completely rely on their paper and the, the pen. But, but uh, today everybody rely on his mobile, he or, his or her mobile. And it needs a time in order to, for, for people to adapt themselves with the uh, new technology in the digital era. So um, uh, traditional mindset should be transformed to the digital mindset and it, it needs some kind of cultural plan uh, the same as the yeah. thing that Erasmus Plus is doing. So um, th this is the thing that I wanted to talk about and uh, uh, I, I think uh, exactly uh, if you want to plan for, for the future, it is needed to see what exactly can uh, Internet of Energy do for you in, in, in your business, in, in which part of the uh, energy chain you are and what kind of devices you want to cover and prepare a picture of the future of your business and define what exactly you want to do in order to define the competencies that you need. And through this methodology, you can define exactly what kind of cultural change is necessary and 
what kind of training, self-training or um, unjust training is necessary in order to uh, provide people with the uh, trainings that are necessary to gain the comp competencies that are uh, necessary for the future. Okay, Dr. Guzman Madian, if you want to um, uh, have a um, summarize about the subject, I'm ready, and then we can go to the questions and answers. Okay, Dr. Sanati, thank you very much for your very uh, strong PowerPoint presentation, and uh, thank you for your description. That was so interesting. Uh, at the end, before we go to conclusion, again, I'm showing the slide about the Nilguru GmbH company in Dusseldorf in Germany, and this company is always um, interested to work with the companies, universities, countries about IOE, engineering, supplying, commissioning in the field of energy and um, maintenance. Now we are going to conclude our speech. According to your topic, the role of energy management and IOE in Industry 4.0 uh, and its effect on HR competencies, we discuss about energy management and also about the importance of energy after 1917. In this um, time, we are in Industry 4.0 and how IoT and information technologies can affect on our business, energy management, and also how training and HR planning can help us in different levels, as uh, Dr. Sanati said, also in public level, to people understand how is the situation, how they can behave professional, and also about the cultural transformation, also about uh, human resource planning and a strategy force for human uh, planning, and uh, that was whole topic. Now we are going to finish the time. That's why uh, I would like to ask the uh, attendees if you have any kind of questions or discussion. We have something like, I think, 10 minutes maximum, 7 minutes. And I would like to ask you, please, write your questions on the chat room. And me and Dr. Sanati uh, will answer you and discuss about the topic you have challenged your question. Thank you very Hello? much, everybody. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, this is Torino Veneri. I am the principal yes. investigator of the Erasmus project. project. So I would like to thank you, Masid Sanati, for this interesting webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amit. You are one of the partners of the project, so thank you. It was uh, an interesting uh, webinar that I think improved the knowledge about this new topic that we hope that uh, will have a very large spread worldwide and uh, would support the new technology with the new education of people. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Otorino. Thank you for your motivation. I think one of the attendees is writing a question in no, the chat room. Yeah. In this time, I would like to uh, take this opportunity and say, I'm thankful from our technical expert at FHM, Manfred, because without his support, that was not possible to hold this speech on um, Adobe Connect, and he tried to support us all the time. Also, we had some online meeting with him during last week to coordinate everything. I'm very thankful from uh, Manfred, or colleague. Okay, Doctor, could you see that uh, one of the attendees has asked, asked about the 
relationship between energy management and IoT? Yeah. I think that was uh, about the slides you already explained about that um, slides you explained about six aspects of IOE in the different parts of energies. Uh, I'm going back to the slide, and I would like to ask Dr. Sanati to explain this slide for okay, the uh, question. You can see uh, the, you are looking for, for the relationship between uh, Internet of Things and uh, energy management. You know that uh, every device in every part of the, or, or every part of the chain of the energy production to energy consumption, um, every device is uh, using the energy at, at, the, at the production or at the end of the consumption. So uh, if, if you have this device is connected through internet to, to a centralized uh, server or some place that can control these devices, it would be possible to gain a very, very um, a strong data in order to use them in your analysis and uh, making better decisions in your management. For example, consider that you know uh, what devices are exactly out of the standard condition, as I mentioned before. When you see that uh, more than 200,000 devices are using energy in, 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 uh, in a steel plant, you can uh, imagine how much energy is consumed and you are interested to know how many of this uh, huge amount of devices are out of the uh, standard condition and they are using more than the standard um, more than the defined uh, um, amount. So, so in, in this way, you can manage the, the device. Now consider that you have some, uh, some autonomous uh, situations or autonomous softwares that can give you some, uh, some understanding of the uh, condition of the devices at the beginning of the chain, I mean in the production plant, and at the end of the chain, that is consumption point. You, you should balance these two together when you want to uh, produce the amount of energy that is necessary for the end point. So, if, if you have uh, the, the big data in your hand when you are uh, balancing your line from the production to transmission to the consumption, you can easily consider all parameters and uh, make better decisions when you want to balance this together or, you know, for example, um, estimate the load that you will have on your transmission lines to define the switching system or configure the switching uh, uh, configuration of your network or grid that you have for transmission. So most of the technical decisions that can affect the, uh, the energy consumption or energy transmission uh, they, they can completely affect by the Internet of Things. So um, I believe that exactly Internet of Things can affect completely the energy management and make a new shape of management on the energy. Also, I would like to add uh, something more. According to this PowerPoint presentation, I'm going back to this slide. You can see now the energy economy has moved from the power economy to data and power economy. And as, as, as I said, according to the, uh, the third wave of the Elvin Toffler book, he said before 1970, uh, the businesses and also energy management could affect on information technology and improve that. But after that, after 1917, information technology and today IoT could affect on all businesses, also energy management and move them from power the, economy to data and power economy. The participant has asked another uh, question about the investment that do we need to convert the traditional steel factory to an IOE. I want to, um, to mention uh, to a report from Metal Bulletin that uh, the investment that, that they need will be returned in three three years. 
So it's not so, so much, especially if you uh, prepare a very um, cost-effective solution because they are, there are different solutions based on the requirements of the industry. We are working on this subject uh, right now in a steel factory, a Mubarak steel factory in, in, uh, in Iran, in Isfahan province. And um, it is really an interesting project because we see that uh, uh, with very small investment, we can provide very, very useful um, data to the experts. So um, I guess uh, our project, based on the estimation that we have, is a two years project. But uh, I'm not sure that it will finish. Uh, we are at the uh, pilot um, part of the project. At the end of the pilot, we can give you an exact time time estimation. Um, three years in which country? It was a study um, done by uh, Metal Bulletin. As I see, I, I think the data was from European and US factories. I, I don't have uh, the name of the countries exactly, but the metal bullet I mentioned to European factories. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Eslami, for your questions and discussion. And thank you, Dr. Sanati, for your interesting description. Uh, I think we are going to finish the time. If there is any other question, you can ask. Otherwise, we can finish the webinar. Do you have any question? Okay. No question? Okay. Thank you very much, uh, everybody, for joining to this webinar, the second webinar of the Erasmus Plus Project Internet of Energy Education Qualification. And we are going to uh, arrange another webinar very soon um, in another topic related to IOE. And I would like to ask the uh, attendees if you have any other question. We are going to uh, provide a bigger file, bigger presentation, PowerPoint presentation, and uh, uh, upload the video, also the PowerPoint presentation, and you can get more information about this uh, topic. And I'm going to say also uh, thank you very much, Dr. Sanati, to take time and help and support us for this webinar. I'm, I know you are so busy. Uh, you need to, because of so many projects, you need to travel to different countries. But I'm very thankful because of your support to have a very interesting topic and webinar today. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Manfred.